This beam engine has a governor that actually works. It also has a Stuart displacement lubricator fitted. The boiler is fired by methylated spirits using the burner that came with the boiler and it makes a change not to have an umbilical cord to the boiler from a gas tank. These spirit burners are deceptively hot and this Stuart 500 boiler raises steam very quickly. Here you see the boiler after a very short time at working pressure. In this case on the gauge it's 75 pounds per square inch. Here I'm opening the main steam valve. The first steam that gets to the cylinder condenses to water and you're supposed to open the cylinder drain cots to let this out but this makes such a mess of the model with black oil and water residue going everywhere I tend to not use them on models this size. And the engine starts to run very sweetly as you can hear on the video. This video of the beam engine plant in steam is edited. In real terms it ran for 40 minutes on one filling of the spirit burner. But now the spirit burner is starting to fade out. So I took the opportunity to adjust the gland nuts on the piston rod and on the valve spindle. After the run, when the steam disappears, you're going to get a vacuum in the boiler and this will suck any water in the water tank into the boiler and possibly fill it right to the top. In this case, I gauged it just right. When the vacuum was created in the boiler, sufficient water was pulled from the tank to fill the boiler for the next run. So while I'm waiting for the boiler to raise steam, it's time to go around the engine and apply some oil. And in no time at all, off it goes. If you listen as it starts running, you can hear like a tapping noise. And that's because there is some water in the cylinder and I haven't opened the drain cocks, but it clears soon enough. I know I've just oiled up the engine, but I'm putting some more oil on because I'm going to run the engine very fast. This engine has a tiny bit of play on the small end on the crosshead, so it does occasionally make a tapping noise, but it's nothing. I'll fix it when I get round to it, and it's certainly not worth making a video about. Look at the speed of the engine now. It really is going quite fast, and the reason for this is to try and get some water in the condenser so I can demonstrate emptying it, and here we go. Yes, that's working fine. The back pressure of the engine's exhaust is pumping the water out of the condenser into this suitable receptacle. It's much better now. All the water and steam and oil is not going down the back of the bench, and I suppose I could even run this on the kitchen table. Although being sensible just for a change, I don't recommend it. Running gas-fired boilers with inadequate ventilation can cause problems. I'm running this engine inside the workshop on the workbench but I'm not too far away from a very large, wide-open garage-type door. And if you remember on one of the previous videos about this steam plant, the carbon monoxide alarm was being tripped. That was when I was using different burners that were unsuitable. This burner seems okay, it's very clean, no bad smells coming out of the chimney, and plenty of heat, and it's not noisy. Because I've been running this engine at a high speed for quite a while, you can hear that it's starting to make a little bit more noise. That's because most of the oil has now been flung off and it needs stopping and re-oiling. Small bearing surfaces always require more oil. What I was very pleased about with this condenser, it functions as a condenser, not just an oil trap. It's time for me to stop talking, but I'll leave the video running to the end. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.